Well, it's one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> We're leaving the track. We've got our chauffeur, Marco Bonanomi. Dindo, Tom and I. As you can see, there's a slight mass exodus of Audi going home. That's our crew. Yep. That's Strange One, Iceman, Grimmy, Basti. That's, uh, I don't know if Timberlake is there, in H. Uh, it's not Justin Timberlake, by the way. The strange one is the one I turn right now. Yeah, and then there's Milhouse. <laughs> and then there's Milhouse, yes, yes. Yeah. And Milhouse. Uh, as you can tell, we're into nicknames. Anyway, <laughs> hope you have a good night's sleep, everybody. I'm certainly sure we will. Especially long. There's uh, homework here from yeah. Timberlake and H. Looks like by the pace of... Uh, of everybody, we're going to have to do a little bit of homework to make sure that we've got the right pace in the car for the race. Night-night. <laughs> Autograph session. Hmm? He's up and running. As you can see, some of the Danish fans are already into party mode. Now, quarter to six, we're about an hour away from uh, the second qualifying session. Last night was basically pretty good. The circuit wasn't in very good condition, quite slippery at the beginning, but uh, cleaned up as the, as the event went on. Uh, 10 o'clock I went out, did a run, and uh, yeah, it was basically, we had to get three laps for each driver to go in. I had two laps at the beginning, and that was, if I got the quality run, perfect. If I didn't, we just moved on and worked on the race program. But uh, the two laps were good, clean laps, I have to say, except for bits of traffic at unfortunately critical points. But, you know, when you take that out of it, we're competitive. We're right in the fight. But that's the thing is, there's six cars in the fight, as we kind of expected. In fact, we've got to bring in Orica and say seven there. And when I look down in LMP2 and GT as well, it's exactly the same. So, you know, tonight, do we go for quality or not? Well, I think we've got a bigger eye in the race. The, our French friends down the bottom of the pit lane, I uh, think it's very important for them, as we saw with the way that they put tyres on Sarazan right at the end. For us, we're going to be looking at the big picture of the race, I think. Well, we've had qualifying. Uh, basically, it's, as we predicted quite a long time ago, it's half a second between the top six cars, half a second is ridiculously close. Uh, the basic car balance for us was quite good, we improved it quite a lot through it, um, but I think everybody else did, we were pushing uh, towards the end uh, to make sure we were still in the fight. Unfortunately, Tom had a slight off just about a couple of minutes before the end and there was some damage, but that's not a big issue. Uh, the car came back, it was stripped out very quickly and it was going to be back in tip-top shape, uh, even by lunchtime, as I said, on Friday afternoon. But as you can maybe see, there was quite a few fans coming in. You look at this. Now that was a long time ago. And this, and latterly, they're starting to bring out pictures from 1992 and 1990 and things like that when Alan McNish had a big long haircut. But uh, anyway, right now we've got a heck of a lot on today because we've got press conferences, we've got a final meeting, strategy meetings, a few things around and about the car. Things that you never see from the race point of view and to be honest, uh, the probably accumulation of that is the parade tonight which uh, I'll bring you some video from. The parade you've got to see. It is unlike anything else where you've got just the streets lined with, I've got to say most of Denmark for one thing, but the streets are just lined with people and we go around in old cars. Fantastic historical and traditional part of Le Mans. But uh, right now we're going last little bit of detail with the setup and getting ready for the 24 hours.